and Ina Monique Dwas Angel Sabota. Uh, ki ki uh, was Ina Nacht Etta. Uh, na eats, uh, he was Rosa May Spencer Year Out. Uh, na tot he was John Year Out. Ka uh, na tot uh, he wa um, uh, he he wak, uh, uh, Larry McFarland Sr. Ka uh, na cots uh, he wak, uh, Rena Catherine Ramsey. Ka na na plach he wak, uh, Titus Spencer. Ka na L he wak, uh, Louise Heigel. Ka na klutz he wak, uh, John. Jack McFarland. Enam Hama uh, Bob Sabota Ka Mamayats uh, Enam Mamayats Peyton Glory Grace Faith May Angel Sabota. In uh, Tauyats uh, uh, Shlapoy, uh, Lapoy, Idaho, Nespers Reservation, In Was Nimipu. Wisdom sits in places, in the land, the language, the people, and the legends. My introduction to you uh, situated where I sit in this place. It is our traditional custom to introduce ourselves in this way. It lets you know who I am and where, I, where I'm from. And uh, it's, just, it's a protocol, and there's wisdom in that protocol. Tonight, um, I'd like to reawaken you to the wisdom that sits in you. There's wisdom in the power. There's all these power places. And the power places that I'm going to talk about tonight um, are stories that happen along the U.S. Highway, 90, uh, US Highway 12 on the uh, northern uh, Idaho. And if you're driving on this, this highway from Lapway to Kamiya, Idaho, there's all these different stories on the left side, right side, left side that are in the, the, the land, the legends. And also there's the, the wisdom that's in the language that has to do with those, those stories. And so I want to give you a chance to get to know some of these places where you, you live on our Nimipu land. And uh, there's power in this place. I'm not sure if you're aware about it, but wherever you live, out in the world and where you grew up, I know there's, there's those same power places in your, your area where you lived. So if you could relate, you might not be able to relate directly to these stories, but you might be, be able to relate to stories in your own places. And so I'm hoping to reawake those stories for you by doing this presentation tonight. So wisdom sits in places in the land. There's power in the land. There's power in the legends. There's power in the language. And there's power in the people. The Nimipu people, Nespers, but in all people, there's this power. I'm going to start off with Itsiaya Coyote. The Nimipu have about 200 plus documented Nespers uh, coyote stories, legend. But not one family knows all these stories. There's hundreds, 200, there's probably more than 200, but we don't know all of the stories. And there's so much wisdom in those stories. And uh, they're not being told like they used to be. And so I'm part of this journey to get them retold, but to me, there's all these stories about coyote um, and then the different lessons that coyote can give. And if we just were to teach our kids these, these legends, they would learn so much. And I feel like coyote legends, uh, they're like dusty and they need to be dust off, dusted off. And I think about that like, for instance, like if, if this were a Bible, sometimes people have dusty Bibles do you have dusty Bibles? And um, it's like there's this dust on them. But when you dust them off and you open up the good book and you read, it's like that dust flies up and it's like, tss, 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 it becomes magic. And you, those words, they, they, you live by them and it becomes magic. 
this is how the coyote stories are. This is how our language is. Nez Perce language, this is the Nez Perce dictionary. And within this dictionary, there's so much knowledge in here. Tss, tss, tss. There's knowledge that sits in these places. I want to share this, this story of um, Itziaya Coyote. Of course, this is a stuffed Itziaya, or just the hide. But I went to the Northwest uh, Storytellers Conference, and that was in Portland, October uh, 2012. But when I went there in the store at the airport, lo and behold, on this lower shelf, there was this stuffed coyote, it's Yaya. And to me, it was just like a affirmation that this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to tell the stories of coyote. And so I went up and I talked to coyote and I says, it's Yaya, coyote. I'm going to wake you up. I'm going to wake you up. And to me, that was, that was so exciting because there's so much knowledge that I'm excited to teach our kids this knowledge so that they will wake up and learn from Coyote. And so my, my journey uh, takes me to where I, uh, I was a student at University of Idaho. My master's research was to create uh, the heart of the monster, Timnapa. Timnapa means heart of the monster. And in Kamiya, Idaho, on US Highway 12, this is the mound where the Timnapa heart of the monster is. And so if you drive by it, this is our creation story, our Nespers creation story. My colleagues and I, uh, we got together and we performed heart of the monster in our language. And so with doing that, that was part of us waking up the stories. But the, the, one of the main goals behind this was uh, to tell the message that, of course, the creation story gives you. And just to give you a brief uh, story on this Heart of the Monster is that Coyote, I played Coyote. I was Itziaya. Coyote uh, is the trickster. He's the hero. He, she, she, everything. And so it happened to be that the monster, this big monster, was eating all the animal people. And it was Coyote who went inside the monster and he devised a plan on how to save all the animal people. And so Coyote ended up killing the monster. And when they all escaped, he got out. Coyote took the parts of the animal people, of the, excuse me, of the monster. He cut them out and he threw them all over the different directions on the land. And wherever the body parts land, people sprung up. He created these different Indian people, one that have, some that have long hair and some that were really tall, some who were um, good gamblers. He threw them everywhere, and everywhere he created them, he created people. Coyote forgot about this beautiful place, this most beautiful place of them all. And so he was reminded by his friend Fox, and Fox told him, you forgot about this beautiful place. And so Coyote grabbed the blood from the heart of the monster and he sprinkled it on the land. And when he sprinkled it on the land, up rose the people, the Nimipu people. And he told them, you will be small in stature, but you will be brave. You will be powerful. You will be strong. You will be good, intelligent people. And so Coyote gave us, the people, these traits, these characteristics. And so it was our goal that we, we were to teach the, the, the children this legend. And it's our goal that we instill those values of being strong, good, brave, intelligent people, to instill it not only in, in the people, but all people, but especially for our youth. If they are to know that they, they have the characteristics of being strong, good, brave, intelligent people, then hopefully they can live up to their creation story. And so we're trying to encourage them, live up to your creation story. So when they drive by the heart of the monster in Kamiai, they will be reminded of who they are. They're good, strong, powerful, brave people. 
And so we're trying to encourage them. Live up to your story. Live up to your story. You are intelligent. You are intelligent. And so that's the power in that place. There's so much power in that place and in our stories. And it's our responsibility to learn them and our responsibility to tell them for our mamayats, our children, so that they will grow up to be strong, good, brave, intelligent people. And these children here are my three daughters, Glory, Grace, and Faith. And um, they are, they know that they're learning the legends and they also, like me, they act out the legends. And when you act them out on stage physically, you know them that hopefully, hopefully they'll go out and act them out in life. So these, these are just very, very powerful to us. And so when I'm telling, talking about our stories, I know you have these stories too. And so I want you to challenge you to think about the own stories that you grew up with. This is another place on Highway 12, and it's across from the Clearwater River Casino, um, northern Idaho, um, Nespers Reservation. I call it Otway, Idaho. Otway is, means um, old lady because there's a, that we call her Miss Frog. She's on, on the side of the hill, and she's Otway, old lady. Um, but it's outside of Lewiston, Idaho, but it, it is on the Nespers Reservation. And what happened here with these um, great rock formations is they had, uh, they had all the animal people were called to a great uh, council. And the council that they had was before human beings. And each one of the animals, they said, what I will give to the human beings is I will take, I would give them the meat from my bodies, like the, the deer would say that. And I'd give them the hides from my back for them to use. And then the fish agreed that they would give themselves to the human beings. But they did this and they had a, an agreement between the animal people and the human beings that if we were, are to give ourselves to you, then you need to take care of us. And so that's why our Indian people are so connected to, to the land, because it is our responsibility. We had that agreement with the animal people. And so we have today one of the largest uh, salmon recovery uh, places in the, in the whole United States is with the Nespers tribe because we remember our agreement with the animal people. We have that connection with them. And then there's the biggest rock here. If you see the biggest rock, that's the mammoth. And so our stories let you know the mammoth. That, our story is about 10,000 years old because that's how long ago the mammoth was here. And the mammoth, the big mammoth that you see here, they're, they were turned to stone. And one reason that the mammoth was turned to stone is because he was late to the council. The mammoth, mammoth was late to the council. So when you drive back and forth, or me driving as quick as I can with not getting stopped, trying to come to LCSE for class, you know, and I see that mammoth on the left, you know, it's a, it's a good reminder that, you know, not to be late. And so we, we learn these lessons as we look left and right. We learn all the different lessons. Uh, of what the animal people, the stories have to tell us. They're good reminders, and they have a lot of great values. I'm only sharing a few tonight. There's so many to tell. Uh, this, this is uh, Pileyaya. Pileyaya is the rock pestle person. And Pileyaya uh, stood at the, uh, on this person's land at Spalding. And, uh, but that Pileyaya was one where you saw uh, people would go to that person for wisdom, to Pileyaya. And Pileyaya can turn people into stone, and, but they would go to him for all kinds of knowledge. And uh, so he, he was a knowledge person. However, the stone that was on this person's land, one day, I'm not sure if it was taken off or it fell off naturally. Right now, this is located in Spalding, Idaho, and the Daughters of, American Indian, uh, Daughters of American Revolution took it and they have a plaque and they put, placed it as a monument to Henry Spaulding, um, the Presbyterian missionary. And so for us, uh, Nimipu people, that was like sacrilegious kind of because they took something that stood for indigenous knowledge and they used it for something totally different. And so now we're having, a, we're trying to get that restored into what it should, should be 
what it should represent. And so we're going to work on replacing that plaque. Um, Hilao Teketsa, there's wisdom in the language. And when we told the story of Heart of the Monster, uh, the Heart of the Monster story, Coyote talks about Hilao Teketsa. And I just want to share you some wisdom in the language. Uh, there's wisdom in these words because Hilao Teketsa means he is apportioning out fish, food. And then the, the Lao uh, Teketsa Nawat is the distributor of, of fish. And uh, in this book, Lewis and Clark Among the Nest Purse, uh, the Uncle Alan Pinkham is the author along with Steve Evans. But they talk about when Lewis and Clark were here, there were, uh, Lewis and Clark had some fish. And they said, this Indian person, the Nest Purse person came and stole our fish. But that's why there's so much power in that, that word because the Lao Tekan Nawat that's who he was. He was the distributor of fish. He had the responsibility of feeding the whole village. And so he took that fish because it was his responsibility. So there's, there's power in knowing the language and knowing the customs. And so that was the custom. So that book, you know, it really tells a lot of the different things that uh, you should know about the, the Nez Perce culture. And there's power in the people. And this is my, my katsa, my grandma. And my grandma was a weaver. And uh, my grandma, before she passed away, uh, I didn't receive any uh, bags from her. But after she passed away, I was, I was given her start. This is my grandma's work from here and on this side. And then I did all this all the way up. And so, but to do this, we think about the wisdom in our people, how they did all this work, and there's math involved, there's um, creativity involved. But this is my grandma and my work to combine together. And she also was a storyteller. And so like, it's my responsibility to continue on with these stories. It's my responsibility to continue on with our, our arts and to, for me to teach my girls, to teach my son. And so this is just one of the things of that shows the power in people, the intelligence in people. And I want to uh, share with you this last uh, closing statement is that, uh, again, power in people. Here sits um, Chief Joseph, one of our leaders, and he's sitting by General Howard. Uh, Chief Joseph was the graduate, graduate, um, graduation commencement speaker at Elizabeth Penny uh, Wilson's graduation in Carlisle, um, Pennsylvania in 1904. And these two tried to kill each other in war, but at his uh, Chief Joseph's graduation address, he talks about um, if, you know, I used to want to kill General Howard, uh, but now here we meet and we're friends, and uh, they used to be enemies, but if he were to die, that he would be sad that he would die. And so to learn from the people from Chief Joseph, who had this good heart, I think this is a very powerful message that we can have the differences, have all our differences in life. We can even, you know, even want to kill each other, but yet we can take that time to get to know each other and we become friends, just like what Chief Joseph did in General Howard. And so wisdom sits in places and there's power in place and there's power in you. And I tell everyone, walk it. And that means wake up, wake up. And I want everyone to wake up to this reawakening, reawake. The power in you, there's power in you and power in others. And what are your stories in your power places? Yohkalo, that's all. Katsuyaki.